Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Moppert here with Paul Hamilton. Paul, it's been a little while since it we've has. had you on set and we've kind of been able to talk, but obviously with the NHL draft coming up and Kevin Adams held his annual press conference kind of about some moves that they've made and then obviously some address some questions as they head into the draft this upcoming week. So first I want to start with a recent move um, that happened in this offseason. Uh, so the Sabres go ahead and they re-sign Gergensen's to a one-year deal. Now we've seen what a veteran can, what a veteran presence can do in this locker room for such a young team. What do you think went into, you know, bringing Gergensen's back on this team, especially now? Again, a, a voice in that room was was Craig Anderson, who kind right. of had such a, a big impact. So but they only had really three veteran voices, and one's gone, as you said, in Craig Anderson. Kyle's back, the captain, Kyle Oposo. And in Gergensen's, the one thing I noticed this year about him was his penalty killing, I don't think, was quite as good. And I thought it had slipped, and he was one of the best penalty killers the Sabres had for every year he's played. Now, he's only 29 years old, so, you know, you're not looking at a guy who, uh-oh, he's slipping or anything like that. Was it just a one-year thing? He also played on one of the best defensive lines in the National Hockey League. People don't realize that. A lot of people criticize Kyle Oposo, too, but Gergenton's Oposo and Krebs were one of the best defensive lines in the National Hockey League last year. So, uh, you know, you would think, yeah, they still have some gas in the tank. I just didn't know if maybe they felt it was time for him to have a change of scenery. And he knew he was only going to get a one-year contract in Buffalo. He probably could have got a two-, three-year contract somewhere else if he tested free agency. But that just goes to show you how things have changed. Before, they couldn't wait to get out of Buffalo. It's like, yeah, I'm out of here. Especially, you're only going to give me one year? See ya. Sam Reinhardt. They never would give Sam Reinhardt a long-term contract. And it hurt, it hurt him, and I understand why it would have. He performed well enough to earn that, and he never got it. So he said, no, I'm not going to sign here. Well, that's changed now. And I think that's one of the reasons why Gergensen's is here, because he wants to be. Right, and, and Adam said at the press conference, he said, you know, when he spoke with him on the phone, he said he was so excited because he knows the potential of this team and he wants to be a part of it, which I think said a lot about that decision as well and, and obviously his decision to come back. So that now moving on to another move that the Sabres have made in the offseason, bringing back uh, Lucas Rusek and Sikoni, which happened just yesterday, uh, you know, obviously they're investing in the future. These two guys are making big impact uh, for the Rochester Amherst. And, you know, what do you think that says about how much they, how much they care, really care about, you know, taking the time and making sure that they have these guys to develop and set them up, as Kevin Adams loves to say, for su sustainable success? Well, they got Sicconi. They traded a prospect for him. Uh, a kid that was in Rochester is basically all all offense and didn't really get the defensive game. So th that's defensive depth is what that is. I doubt he's going to be on the Sabre roster to start with, but if they start running into injuries, I can tell you because I saw a lot of the Calder Cup playoffs, he was excellent for them in the Calder Cup playoffs. He, they probably wouldn't have gotten where they got without him. Let's put it that way. That's how good he was. Shut down defenseman type of a thing. So it's a depth type of a signing. Rusek, people might be surprised. I mean, people are talking about Kulik and Roseanne and Savoy. Rusek might be the only one on the roster on, game, on, on, on opening night of that group. You know, you just have to wait and see uh, how training camp goes. But that's how good he is. And we saw him for two games this year, and he was good here. He had a goal and assist. Kind of a nifty assist that he had, too. And he can give you that good offense. But he's very, very good defensively, too. And I asked Kevin Adams, can that game where he was so good, he was an AHL All-Star, can that translate into the NHL game? And he said, absolutely, I think it can. He feels he can be a very good two-way player in the National Hockey League. Exactly. And that's kind of what I was going to say is Adams said that at the end. He said he is 
a future NHL player. That's how he felt when he was talking about him. Um, so another thing that Kevin Adams spoke about at the press conference was uh, extending Rasmus Dahlin and Owen Power um, to longer term extensions. Now we've seen this with Tage Thompson. We've seen it with Dylan Cousins. I mean, what does that say that, you know, all these guys are willing? He said, you know, it, it was a mutual back and forth. They want to make it happen. He wanted to make it happen. What does that say about the franchise and the future of the franchise that all of these young guys that are, you know, they're turning into these awesome and, and great players that they want to stay here in Buffalo and sign these long-term extensions? Look at Samuelson. He signed a long-term seven-year contract, and he could have got more. I mean, he played 58 NHL games. I think he could have waited, signed a two-, three-year deal, and gotten a lot more and he goes why He goes, I want to play here these are the guys I want to play with these are my teammates so why wait it was a good deal so I didn't have to wait it was a no-brainer for him you know and I think that's what they're running into now with Darlene and power and Darlene's easy he'll get the eight-year deal is it 10 million is it is it going to be do you make him the highest paid defenseman which would be 11.6 if he's going to be the highest paid defenseman or is he around 10 it's, it's, it's somewhere in there you know, that he'll wind up. Power's not so easy. What does he do? I mean, do the Sabres say he is definitely going to be good? Let's offer him eight years, 10 million, which is overpaying for right now. But four years down the road, we'll be sitting there going, can you believe they got him for $10 million type of a thing? If he continues, and I think he will uh, at, the, at what he's at. Or does he decide to bet on himself and go for three years? Maybe what Darlene signed for. Darlene's in, at the end of a three-year, $6 million per contract, an $18 million deal. Does Power go for something like that and make $6 million for three years and then really cash in after that? Now, another guy, as you were just saying about Matias Samuelson, and, and he wants to be here at the end, locker cleanouts. Another guy who was up to be a restricted free agent come, you know, the summer was Tyson Jost. Now, he seemed like in those interviews at the end of the season, you know, I really hope they, you know, bring me back, this and that. And, and that was another thing that Kevin Adams did, um, you know, tell us and catch us up with was that he did initiate, you know, that they do want him back. What, why do you feel that... Jost would be a good player to have back on this team. I think it goes back to when they claimed him off waivers and people are saying, what are you doing? I mean, he couldn't even dress for the Minnesota Wild. And Adams and Granado, especially Granado, you, you've heard enough of Granado. He's like, we know there's more there. This is a, like, I'm going by memory, something like a 12th overall pick, 11th or 12th overall pick. So when he was in the draft, he had a lot of talent that people wanted to sink their teeth into. Well, it hadn't, hasn't happened so far, but Granado thinks it still can. He goes, he's young, and we felt, why not take him on waivers? Because we think there's a huge upside there. And he did probably produce more points as a Sabre than he did anywhere else, but I also thought his play started to diminish a little bit too as the season went on. And they also wanted him to come in to help the penalty kill. That did not happen. So I think he might be in the same spot Gergensen's is. We'd love to have you for a one-year contract. If not, if we all move on, so be it. Thank you for coming. You know, we enjoyed having you here. And so I think the ball might be in his court in that type of a situation. Now let's shift gears a little bit. Let's look to the NHL draft, obviously, coming up um, this week. You mentioned 12th overall. Sabres have 13th overall at the press conference. Kevin Adams talked about, you know, he feels that this draft is full of players that, you know, it could be they might go for a forward or they might go for a defenseman. You know, they're not really sure. It seemed like. He had a pretty specific name in mind. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. get to that in one second. But, you know, a lot of people also mentioned that defensemen might not be up and get picked that high. They might fall. Do you agree with that statement? Jerry Fortin talked about it. Of course, he didn't want to get into specifics. I understand that. They're not going to give away their board. But he feels there are going to be defensemen taken in the top ten, and I agree. You know, David Reinbacher, who's probably the best defenseman in this draft, you know, uh, I saw a draft, a, a mock draft that has him sixth overall. I've seen other people say, yeah, defense mark can be taken until the 15th. If he's still there when the Sabres pick, I'd almost guarantee you that's the pick. 
but you're right. It's not like the NFL draft where they, they say it's the best overall pick, and I'm not saying they're lying or anything like that, but they're not drafting 18-year-olds. When you're drafting 18-year-olds, you don't know what they're going to be at 21 or 22. So I think you really do have to stick to the best player available then because there's so many variables in drafting 18-year-olds that's so different than what they draft in the NFL. And Adams, you know, he talks to a lot of people around the NHL, NFL, NBA. He talks to all these different GMs to like, well, what do you do in your draft? How do you evaluate your players when you're not? Now, in the NBA draft, there are some high school kids. But overall, they're not drafting all 18-year-olds. Now, as I mentioned, Adams kind of seemed like he had a guy in mind. He said it several times. He said, you know, we think that this person will be there come pick number 13. Do you have a thought? Maybe not a name, but maybe a thought whether that would be a defenseman or... It might be David Reinbacher. It might be that. I don't think the... the uh, you know, the, the, we were talking a little bit about, uh, before we started, about uh, Mitchkov, the Russian kid, who if in normal circumstances, if he didn't have a three-year contract in, in uh, the KHL, would probably go one-two. Not probably, would go one and two. But how much does that scare teams off? Well, there are people are talking about maybe Montreal will like him in the top 10. Maybe Philadelphia will like him in the top 10. Buffalo, I'm sure, would love him in the 10, 13, but I think that's a pipe dream with the talent this kid has. So what? you got to wait three years. So he's 21. It's not like he's 81. You know, It's not like he's filing for Social Security after three years in the KHL. So if you have to wait three years for a talent like that, why not? Another thing, too, Kevin Adams said he, he wouldn't count out a trade, but, uh, you know, you've obviously seen the growth of this team and, and, you know, some drafts in the past. Is that something that he typically does or you think that he would do? I was curious when I asked him. I go, is, is, is the pick off the table? Because he's always talking about making the pick, always has. And he said if he has his druthers, he would like to make the pick. But if the right deal came up, he goes, of course we would look at it. He goes, no, is it a hard, fast rule? We don't trade the pick? No, it's not. He goes, if somebody gives us an offer that will, and you know what he always says, help us now and give us the long-term, you know, <laughs> sustainable long-term growth, then of course they'd be open to it. So it's not a hard and fast rule, but all things equal, I think he would rather make the pick unless somebody knocks his socks off with a trade. And then lastly, something that I know you've talked about, we've talked about the goaltending situation. Obviously, they've got three guys going into the season. And, and Adams referred to it as, he said, we're in a position of strength. Do you think, and I know you would say, you would say he's not going to come right out and say it if he felt that maybe they weren't. Um, but do you think that's a possibility going into the draft that they would kind of shock everyone after, you know, again, a, a small sample size of Devin Levi towards the end of the season. But is, is that something that you would project maybe happening? Not in the first round, but it sounds like they'll probably take a goaltender. Um, a lot of teams do take one. They only have one in the system now. I mean, they have two up in Buffalo, but they had traded Portillo because Portillo – He's got eyes. He's got ears. He heard Kevin Adams talking about Levi for all those years, and Levi was the, one of the most highly decorated college goaltenders. Portillo was at Michigan in college, did pretty well too. But he knew the path to the NHL was not going to be easy, if almost impossible for him. So he wasn't going to sign here. So th they actually recovered the pick, which I thought was pretty good. Usually you don't. He was a third-round pick. You might have to trade him for a fourth or a fifth, but he got a third-round pick back. From the Kings, so so that was good. But what I'm trying to say is they only have one young goaltender in the system who's, who they drafted last year, who they said was the best goaltender in the draft, but he's not even close to ready. So I would be surprised if they don't draft a goaltender somewhere in this draft. All right, well, there you have it. Paul Hamilton, thank you very much. And we'll get to hear lots more from Paul uh, live in Nashville over at the NHL draft this upcoming week. But for now, Paul, thank you. Yes.